enero. Hello and welcome to Making It Big Season 8. I am your host, A.B. Ravi. This week's story falls into a totally different category. It is not a rack to riches story, nor is it about a story on someone who has inherited a fortune. It is about a man who dared to chase his dreams, but came perilously close to committing harakiri when the world was at his feet. Some seven years ago, in 2010 to be precise, V. Vaidyanathan stepped on from the board of ICICI Group to take over NBFC set up by Kishore Biani. Much to his dismay, the business was in a bad shape and it almost broke his back. But being a regular marathoner and golfer, he had the stamina, grit and focus to chase his dreams. And after a grueling two years, bounced back. Capital First, his brainchild, is an NBFC with a difference. It uses technology to finance the underserved, mainly the small entrepreneurs and small consumers. Result, it has not only transformed the lives of some 4 million people in a short span of 7 years, but has also delivered profitable numbers that have won admiration from all stakeholders. Interestingly, many of these life-transforming decisions were taken by Vaidyanathan while he was on a flight. Take a look at Capital First Story. It's a fascinating management buyout story. To hell and back, in essence, sums up the story of V. Vaidyanathan, the man who built Capital First into a leading financial services provider in seven years flat. This accomplishment of turning around a vulnerable venture into a profitable one is unparalleled in the NBFC space. It could well become a case study in V schools and not without reason. For unlike traditional models of financing, Capital First created new technology-led models to finance MSMEs and consumers in the hitherto unbanked and underpenetrated space. Thus, it provides loans anywhere between 15,000 rupees and 2 crore rupees for business expansion, plants and machinery, office display panels, ACs, PCs, laptops, printers, office furniture, two-wheelers and short-term loans. Traditionally, these segments were underserved by the financial system owing to huge operating and credit costs. But Vedya knew this segment was the gold mine. The result? Capital First managed to transform the lives of 4 million people. And to ensure they maintain high quality assets, he and his team have put in place effective risk mitigation measures. As a result, only 38% of the total applications gets disbursements. Each application passes through several levels of scrutiny and checks, mainly centered around cash flow evaluation, credit bureau and reference checks. These stringent processes have capped the company's gross and net NPA at 1.65% and 1% respectively. This is among the best in the Indian financial services. Today, Vedya and his investors are laughing all the way to the bank. But the road to success was not exactly a cakewalk. So how did it all begin? To hark back in time, Vedya, part of a four children family, was born on the 2nd of January 1968. After schooling at Kendriya Vidyale, he graduated from Bits Mesra at Ranchi in Jharkhand and then completed his advanced management program from Harvard Business School, Boston, USA. Like his father and siblings, he too wanted to be a part of the defense services, but he failed to make it as a pilot with the Indian Air Force on medical grounds. So in 1990, he joined Citibank where he quickly learned the ropes of retail banking. He was sharp, persistent and result-oriented and these qualities saw him rise up the corporate ladder fast. Impressed by his performance, Shikhar Sharma, the then MD of ICICI Personal Financial Services, wooed him to be a part of ICICI Bank's retail story. That was 6th March, year 2000. Here too, Vedyanathan made his mark. 
then ICICI was a development financial institution which was beginning to make forays into the retail banking space under KV Kamath with where they are bringing in a new sense of urgency and dynamism ICICI managed to grow the retail loan book to 130000 crore rupees and build a network of 1400 branches and 25 million customers in 2006 He was drafted on the board and by 2009 he became the MD and CEO of ICICI Prudential Life Insurance Company. And then the unexpected happened. In one of his business trips to Hyderabad, he met the retail king Kishore Biani, who during the 1R Plus flight talked about his NBFC business future capital. By the time the flight landed, Kishore made Vedyanathan an offer to take over future capital which was headless and also agreed to wear their term of 10% equity that was 2010 Vedinathan felt elated this offer was close to his dream of setting up a retail bank but his family and friends were shocked as he was already on the board of India's largest private sector bank many felt he was doing a harakiri But 42-year-old Vedyanathan felt it was now or never. Then came the nightmare. An A-plus rated company, Future Capital, was into forex, wholesale banking, brokerage, wealth management, etc. The company had a loan book of 935 crore rupees and had cumulatively financed some 13000 customers but its gross and net npas were as high as 5.28% and 3.78% respectively vedyanathan brought in professionals to transform the company and raise capital for management buyout but only to hit the wall With Kishore Biani openly expressing his intentions to exit Future Capital through media channels, the gloom further deepened, making banks and private equity players back out. With investments not coming in, Vedya between 2010 and 2012 was literally running with the hare and hunting with the hound. Yet, to his credit, he managed to grow the business by becoming an aggregator for a bank. Then came the turning point of his life. Call it chance or luck. The person sitting next to Vedyanathan was Narendra Ostawal of Warburg Pincus. In the 2 hours flight to Delhi, Vedyanathan told his story with passion and conviction. Warburg bought his story, but before funding Vedyanathan, they did a reference check with the most revered personality from corporate India, Deepak Parekh. Well I said uh, if there is an opportunity please don't lose it go ahead and invest the reason I said this was I have known Vaidhi for many years from his ICICI days he came he used to meet me regularly after he left ICICI to start this new company and uh, every quarter he would come and show me the results and uh, he was risk averse he was a prudent lender he was totally committed i've seen him in his office i've gone to his office met his senior colleagues and i was convinced that it would be a success story the glowing compliments from deepak parekh reinforced their belief and warbuck pinkus went the whole hog there were a number of things that appealed to us about capital first but we at warbuck pinkus are all about backing entrepreneurs and management teams and the first thing and the most important thing that appealed to us was vaidyanathan and the strong team he had built under him and we felt he really had the ability along with his team to take what was just a platform at the time and turn it into a leading retail consumer and msc msme financing organization in india taking it from that platform in what was a very underserved market and which are niches that really were not served by the banks we thought gave vaidyanathan and his team a chance to grow this business to the next level and create this leader in the market most importantly he had integrity he had professionalism and he had this entrepreneurial spirit it's a rare combination and the chance to partner with him as he embarked on this journey was something that we found very appealing vedyanathan was on cloud 
But what made the moment very special was the touching gesture from the veteran banker KV Kamath. When Vedyanathan told his former boss Kamath about the Warburg Pinkus deal, Kamath got up from his chair, removed the blue tie he was wearing, folded it and gave it to Vedyanathan after a gentle hug. Once 810 crore rupees came in, Vedyanathan changed the business model to retail and then executed a management buyout of the company through open offer. Thus was born Capital First on the 29th of September 2012. All these changes and Vedyanathan's dynamism are reflected in the company's financials. Today, Capital First is a AAA rated company. Between FY 2013 and FY 2017, its assets under management or AUM has grown from 7,500 crore rupees to 19,850 crore rupees, registering a CAGR of 27%. Likewise, its income has grown at a CAGR of 46%, from 358 crore rupees to 1,642 crore rupees. At the same time, the company's profit after tax has jumped from 63 crore rupees to 239 crore rupees, recording a CAGR of 40%. In sum, investors have earned handsome returns. Indeed, Vedinathan has arrived. Going by the accolades and awards, he and his company have won. Capital First continues to grow at a scorching pace. His army of 2,100 employees spread over 222 locations have cumulatively served over 4 million plus customers. On that note, it's time for a short break. When we come back, CNBC TV 18's A.B. Ravi talks to V. Vedinathan of Capital First to find out how he went about chasing his dream that finally ended in a management buyout. Also joining us on the show will be Rajat Varma of HSBC. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Between 2010 and 2012, Vaidyanathan faced too many hurdles, too many rejections when he tried raising big money for his pet project. But he was unfazed. His eureka moment came when Warburg Pinkers bought his story. I caught up with the 49-year-old V. Vaidinathan, founder and chairman of Capital First, at his tastefully done office in Mumbai's buzzing commercial hub, Lower Paril. I asked him what gave the confidence that you'd succeed. This is what he has to say. Take a look. Vaidinathan, Rajat, welcome to the show. Vaidinathan, I may begin by asking you, you come across as a bond risk taker. You joined the City Bank and you're doing extremely well, and you decided to quit and join ICICI Bank. There you rose very fast to reach the board level. At that point of time, what made you give up that lucrative job and be your own boss? I had done 20 years of banking by the time, in, uh, I, by the time it was uh, 2010. Yeah. And uh, it was definitely on my mind that in my area of strength, can I not start a retail bank? And at that point of time, RBI had given out a couple of licenses to Yes Bank, to Kotak Mahindra Bank. It was on my mind, can we do it? And uh, I used to joke about it to my colleagues at ICICI Bank that one day I will set up my own bank. So this was probably a route towards making it happen. So what gave you the confidence that you will succeed? We were building a business in a, in a space where I had uh, experience, I had confidence. Okay. And at no stage we looked back. At no stage we felt, oh, the task is too big. You know, in 2010, our loan book on retail was only 94 crores. So it was like a very tiny piece, considering the, the, maybe the book I was managing at ICICI Bank, our loan book was over 1 lakh uh, 40,000 crores. Yeah. It started like that. But I was quite confident that given the opportunity India gave for growth and the extent of underpenetration and the amount of technology available for building new business in the space, I definitely felt at every stage it can be built. After you took over this business, why did you transform it? It was doing wholesale banking, it was into forex, it was into brokerage. You transformed the company completely. What made you bet on small and medium enterprises? All we had done was the original theme of leaving ICSA was to start a retail banking business. Okay. That's all was the theme. 
So this company, for example, had many businesses. It had a foreign exchange business. It had a broking business. It had a wealth management business. It had a mall management business. It had wholesale banking business. Honestly, I didn't leave ICIC to do any of these businesses. So the idea was take out all these businesses, take the shell. On the shell, start financing small new entrepreneurs. Our business model is very simple. Financing small entrepreneurs, financing Indian consumers with the help of technology and scale it up. Okay, let me get Rajat in. Rajat, you heard the first person account from Mr. Vaidyanathan. Yes. As a banker, what does it strike you? What strikes me is the speed of that journey. Clearly, you know, the, the time then where they are stepped out of ICIC and built this. It's not such a long duration of time, but it's a scale business. I think that's a key determinant to a private equity in investor, to any investor, to any bank, because clearly in the space that uh, Capital First operates in, that's going, how do you scale with the right controls, the right management, the right governance? I think that is the greatest determinant of comfort of an investor or a banker, etc. The opportunity, the space, and, and, and uh, the clarity or, I think, focus. So, as Vedya mentioned, he was very clear that he wanted to build a retail institution. And he stuck to that, and, you know, that the core, that that's the experience that he carried with him from ICICN earlier, and that's the team that he built, and that's the business that he's built, you know, without deviating from it, without getting confused, just building that on scale. And when you superimpose that on the Indian kind of landscape where consumption is growing, small businesses are flourishing or are, are getting more and more ambitious. So what's the USP of your business? What makes it different from other NBFCs? We have built a business which is in a space that is rather uh, underserved and we're doing it differently and that together makes it, a, 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 makes it our own uh, USP. Okay, so coming back to the 2010, 2012 period, what are the lessons you learned that two years and very crucial for you actually nearly broke your back and you almost you bounce back when i look back and i try to take my memory back there never look back i mean except once or twice when i really regretted leaving icic bank but most of the time i would say that the uh, just keep moving ahead and don't look back uh, be positive all through those two years i kept believing someone will be there if it's not you, you. If it's not you, you. But someone will back this idea, and someone will give me 800 to 1,000 crores. So and there's someone meaning equity. Okay. So whether, whether the discussion is fruitful or not, to keep believing someone will, uh, it's a very important part of the discussion to be positive. So what do you believe in, luck or serendipity? You know, luck makes it feel as if some god is sitting out there and bestowing luck on some yeah. selected few. I, I, I don't believe that anything like that is happening. Uh, I believe that uh, effort meets chance and becomes serendipity. And I believe, therefore, out of chance is not in our control. Maybe it is, depending on where we go, but effort is in our control. So wherever we are, whomever we're meeting, make the effort. I remember once that uh, I was uh, really uh, trying to get appointments from uh, various uh, institutions to make a pitch. Yeah. And I finally got an appointment with the International Finance Corporation, IFC. And a gentleman called Arun Kumar had come from, uh, from, uh, from US. Okay. The day he came, I, had, I was struck down with dengue. And I was sh literally shivering with 103 fever. But I did not want to let go of that appointment. I met him at Sofitel in the in Vantacola complex, and I had the two-hour discussion. At the end of it, he told me, what's wrong with you? And then he felt me and said, you're very high on fever. The point is that just don't let go of opportunity. You don't know which one will strike. If a youngster came to you for advice, what is the advice you'd give him or her how to start a business, the do's and don'ts? I definitely feel that uh, uh, if you're going for it, you've got to go for it wholeheartedly. And Perfect. we can't keep our feet yeah, in two places. Uh, number two, some risk is uh, there when we start something, when we leave a cheese and catch a new cheese. Yes, there is some risk involved, but we've got to take it in our stride. Uh, number three, uh, be very, very, very positive. I believe that there is a great amount of uh, silent power in being positive. 
Number four, it certainly helped me a lot, and certainly in, in the initial days, is goodwill of people. Goodwill, uh, of, people. goodwill of people. I found that uh, all the people whom I've dealt with in my past life in ICICI Bank and I, in Citibank and the ecosystem, everyone was willing to lend some shoulder in the process. And I think uh, some of goodwill has uh, helped me a lot. Very, very well put. Thanks a lot, Vaisanathan, for being on the show. Thanks, Rajat, for being on the show. It's a pleasure talking to both of you. Yeah, thank you. Well, that was Vaidyanathan telling us how he skillfully played bouncers and googly. These are the mantras he implemented to build capital first. Never look back. Go for your ideas wholeheartedly. You need to take risk to make it big. Effort is under your control, so put in 100%. Honesty and ethics are a must. You need to earn the goodwill of the people. Well, on the face of it, the mantra seems simple and easy, but it's tough to practice. Before I go, here's an interesting observation made by Abhinav Bindra, the Olympic gold medalist winner, and I quote him, Practice is a talent. Perseverance is a talent. Hard work is a talent. I have only one talent. I can work harder than anyone else. Unquote. Vaidyanathan did likewise and in the process converted capital first into a gold mine. On that note, it is time to say goodbye. See you next week with another interesting episode. Till then, keep watching CNBC TV 18.